Welcome to our mid-year prayer and fasting week. I always look forward to prayer and fasting week. But can you believe it? Six months have passed and the world has faced many, many challenges. For example, we are still trying to live the new normal, trying to live with the pandemic still ongoing. Our country faces new leadership in the government. Our church continues to pursue God's mission for all of us. Much has been prayed for, and there are many more things to intercede for. One thing is sure, the future is uncertain, but we are certain of who holds the future. So this year's mid-year prayer and fasting, i like us to focus on the reality of how much we need to always depend on the Lord, which is to fast and pray. But our theme will be based on our core values, love, L-O-V-E. Why are we going to focus on core values? Let me tell you, it is so important that as a church, we not only understand our mission, our vision, which is to make disciples, to see families transform, our country transform, but above all, core values tell us how we are to pursue it. What are the characteristic traits required of God's servant to pursue the core values. So let me begin. For example, the first night, we'll be discussing the letter L. Love God, love others. Why? Because loving God is the greatest commandment. And when we love God, we love others. Many times we are so busy doing things for God, but we neglect the motivation, which is number one, Based on our core values, L stands for love God and then love others. Next is O. O stands for obedience. Submission to God's authority and God's word. Submission to human authorities. Why is obedience so important? Obedience is an act of faith. Obedience is really telling God, I trust you, Lord, because you have commanded us to obey. So it is so important that CCF leaders, CCF members understand submission to God is submission to His divinely appointed authorities. Number three, V means what? Volunteer. We believe that all of us must be mobilized to serve. It doesn't matter full-time, part-time, but we are all to be volunteers. Why? We are to serve God and people. It is so crucial that we understand we are servants. People should not have to ask us to serve. We should be motivating everybody with a volunteering spirit. Wherever God is burdened you with, God has gifted you to do something about it, volunteer to serve. And lastly, L-O-V-E. What is E? Engage the family. The most important relationships that God has given you is your family. You can be single, but you have a family. You can be married, you have a family. Whatever it is, understand your first discipleship group, your first point of discipleship, if you don't mind, focus on family members. And I pray that in this season of prayer and fasting, we will learn that the most important thing to do is to seek God by loving Him. May we all experience spiritual breakthroughs in every aspect of our lives as we spend the next couple of days praying and fasting. May God protect your family. May God protect CCF and its members to be faithful and true to our calling. Let us now listen to our first devotional speaker. Eric Totanes, a young leader, and he'll speak from us the importance of loving God and loving each other. Have a blessed time seeking the Lord. Hello, CCF family. Welcome to our mid-year prayer and fasting, Fast, Pray, Love. For this year's mid-year prayer and fasting, as a church, 
we will review and pray through our core values, L-O-V-E. Today is part one of a four-part message throughout the media prayer and fasting. We will fast, pray, and learn more about our core values as a church, all together, praying through each one of them. Let's have a quick look and review our core values. Our first core value, love God, love others. Obey God's word and authorities. V, volunteer. E, engage the family. If you visited a place or a country, there's something that in that place that will stick with you. I remember when my wife and I went to Japan, we tried to ride the, they call the Shinkansen or the bullet train. One of the fastest and most efficient train services in the world, known for their punctuality and their fast service. Maybe for some of you, you don't know this, but they are also known for their speed cleaning. Shinkansen cleaning crew have just seven minutes to get the train ready for the next passengers. One person is in charge of one car with around 100 seats and the whole car must be made spotlessly clean during those crucial seven minutes. It dawned on me and got me thinking, how about us? What are we known for? If a person go to CCF, what is that one thing that they will stick with them as they leave? Will they remember us of something pleasant? For today's message, we'll come together and pray that all of us will continue to grow in our love for God and our love for others. Our first core value, love God, love others. Love is not just an expression of what we feel. You see, biblical love is a decision to seek and pursue what's best for others, regardless of our feelings. Our love for our country, our church, um, our nation must start with a deep, incorruptible, intimate love for God that then overflows to others. True love is an act of service and sacrifice. We've read in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7, we know that love is patient, kind, all of these wonderful things. In verse 8, it reads, Love never fails. Is the church still known for being a community of love? A love that never fails. Continuing to love people, loving the lost, the least, the last, the hurting, those who are suffering, do they still feel that love that comes from God? Are we still giving a love that doesn't fail? In 1 John 4, 19, we know that God himself first loved us. In return, we can love him back and others. It is a love initiated by God, inviting us to be in a loving relationship with Him. God is love. That's why the love that we have never fails because we receive an incorruptible love, the perfect kind of love from the perfect source, our Father in heaven, God. He first loved us. We are focused on the centrality of Jesus' love for us. Jesus is at the center, at the core of this love. We love Him back and love others with the love that overflows from our being. In Romans 5.8, it reads, But God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's how God demonstrated His love to you and me sacrificial love. John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. I love Romans 8, 38 to 39, for I am convinced that neither death, nor life, 
nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's how God demonstrated His love toward us. Powerful love. But the question is, how do we respond to God's love? Again, our first core value, let's say it together, love God, love others. Jesus tells us how to love God. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. These words were repeated throughout the Bible, both in the Old and the New Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5 says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Deuteronomy 11.1 1 says, You shall therefore love the Lord your God and keep His charge, His statutes, His rules, and His commandments always. Joshua 23.11 says, Be very careful therefore to love your God, the Lord your God. In CCF, we believe loving God means loving Him exclusively above all other things and beings. This means that lukewarm, half-hearted, or apathetic affection for God won't do. To love God is to put Him first. It is an undivided love. God is our priority. If we love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, arts, and strength, then we will not allow other things to crowd in, like the fleeting and temporary sources of happiness that the world offers. Followers of Jesus must have a supreme love for Christ. God gave us a heart of flesh from a heart of stone. We were former rejectors of Christ, transformed into followers of Christ. Former haters of God, transformed into lovers of God. We will pray to love God and love others it is a 100% total devotion to love God. We will pray to grow in your love through obedience to Christ, prayer, God's Word, fellowship, and witnessing. This involves our vertical connection with God and our horizontal relationships with people. This first core value, love God, love others, can be represented by this wheel illustration an obedient life to Christ, that's the rim of the will, centered on Jesus Christ at the center bore of the will, with four spokes on vertical and horizontal, our prayer life, learning God's word, our fellowship with people, and our witnessing to others. We must continue to live in obedience to Christ every day of our lives. We will pray to grow in your love through obedience to Christ. 2 John chapter 1, verse 6, And this is love, that we walk according to His commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, that you should walk in it. The question is, are you walking in obedience to God right now? In Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, we saw what happened to Enoch? Enoch walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. Are you walking with God today? Our prayer is that we will continue to obey and walk according to God's commandments. Second, pray to grow in your love through prayer. How is your prayer life today? Do you still have a vibrant relationship with God or is it shaky, unsure, or unstable? It's important to be connected. Without the internet, you can't work. Without power supply, your gadgets won't work. Christians should be concerned if we have a weak connection with God. Are you concerned on how your prayer life looks like right now? How strong is your connection to God? Let's learn it from Jesus. Mark 1.35 In the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away 
to a secluded place and was praying there. What can we learn from this? Jesus prioritized prayer. It was his first important activity of the day. While it was still dark, he will pray. Go to his Father, connect to his Father, strengthen the connection, grow in his prayer life. If Jesus himself saw the importance of prayer, how about us? Is prayer your priority? Let us pray to grow in our love for God through prayer. Luke 5, 16, Jesus often slip away to the wilderness and pray. We will pray. We will make sure that starting today, we will prioritize prayer. Next point, pray to grow in your love through God's Word. We are strengthening our vertical connection to God through prayer and studying His Word. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Do you want to experience an active Christian life? We have to make sure that God's Word is also living and active in our lives. Go to God's Word today, every day, because all Scripture is inspired by God, profitable for teaching, for, for reproof, for correction, for training, in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. God's Word equips you to do good works. Which leads us to our last point. Pray to grow in your love through fellowship. Charles C. Ryrie said, This three, fellowship, the Word, prayer, will enable the believer to experience the new life in his heart, in his intellect, emotions, will, and spiritual life. That's why I encourage you today, join a D group. Pray for people that will journey with you because I believe growth happens in discipleship groups. Pray that you will grow in your love for God through your fellowship with people. We know this in Hebrews 10.25, not forsaking our own assembling as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Don't give up even if you're hurt. Don't forsake meeting up with your brothers and your sisters. Get encouragement from the right people through prayer, through fellowship, through reading God's Word. With fellow believers with the same spirit through fellowship, grow together in fellowship. We will enjoy our loving relationship with God and it will translate into loving actions which leads to our last point. Pray to grow in your love through witnessing. In 1 John 4.20 says, If someone says, I love God, and yet he hates his brother or sister, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother and sister whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. So, thus are I love God's statements evident in our actions. It's easy to post godly things online, Bible verses, encouraging words, but is it also true offline? As some would say, talk is cheap. But for Christians, we walk our talk. It is true and it's evident with our actions, with our conduct at home, at work, in school, in the church, outside the church. 1 John 4, 21 says, And this commandment we have from Him, that the one who loves God must love his brother and sister. A growing love for God results to actions of love that other people can see in the way we speak and live. Let's read this powerful verse from Jude 21, 23. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life and have mercy on some who are doubting. Save others, snatching them out of the fire and on some have mercy with fear, hating even the garment polluted by the flesh. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Save others, snatch them out of the fire. 
The question is, when was the last time you witnessed to a stranger? Or maybe you can start with your best friend, your siblings, your parents, your office mates, your classmates, your, the people around you. But we will pray today to grow in our love through witnessing. And before we end today's message, let's hear this powerful testimony from a person changed by God's love and now sharing that love to others. Let's all welcome Renz or Kiko. As a pastor's kid, I grew up attending church and participating in the youth ministry at a very young age. I value the teaching and guidance that my parents gave me. However, as I became more exposed to the world, I also became rebellious. I tried different vices and got into wrong relationships while actively serving in church. Despite knowing the consequences of my actions, I continued dishonoring God and my family. My waywardness adversely affected my studies, increased conflicts at home, and made me blame God and the church for my miserable life. I even thought of ending my life because of the shame that I brought upon myself and my family. And during this lowest point of my life, he led me to John chapter 16, verse 33, which says, These things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. And it reminded me that I have victory in the Lord, and that He has forgiven all of my sins, and that He is in perfect control of my life, as long as I surrender my life to Him and obey Him. And that was when I recommitted my life to God, turned away from all my worldly desires and pleasures, and renewed my relationship with Him. God also made me experience His love through reconciling with my family. Once again, we enjoyed family time and meals together, and have learned how to be more open and honest about how I was. I also felt God's love from my disciple who guided and encouraged me intentionally in my spiritual journey. And as a result, I became more eager to learn about God and His plans for me, growing to be more sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit about the areas of my life that I need to improve and surrender. But most importantly, I have learned to enjoy a more intimate, quiet time with the Lord. Through God's unfathomable love and mercy for me, I started to extend that same kind of love to others. During the lockdown, Typhoon Rolly and Ulysses came and ruined many parts of the Philippines. Me and some other volunteers of CCF Lower and Tepolo saw the need and joined the Tulong Tayo Relief Operation to help the people in Camarines Norte, Camarines Sur, and in Catanduanes. And even when Typhoon Odette came which rapid several provinces in Visayas and Mindanao, we found fuel and God's love to repack until we hours of the morning carry heavy sacks of rice and deliver them to the port just so that it will reach the hands and mouths of the thousands of people affected by the typhoons. What's amazing is how the Lord used us to share His love to them, not only providing momentary physical and mental security, but also providing an eternal assurance of salvation in the gospel of Jesus. And soon after, God gave me another faith-stretching opportunity to serve and lead Elevate Commonwealth. After much prayer, fasting, and receiving guidance from my parents and disciples, I heeded God's call. It became another opportunity to experience God's love and in turn, impart that love to others. Our Elevate Commonwealth team, together with some of our friends who volunteered to help in the Tulong Tayo Community Youth Retreat in Catanduanes, we conducted a true life retreat with the high school and college students of Barangay Cagraray in the town of Bato. Out of 40 participants, 30 got baptized. And by God's grace, small groups were established as a result of the retreat and they regularly meet after Sunday services in their community. And aside from that, our team became a part of the Catanduanes State University Youth Leadership Summit in partnership with Not Alone and CVM. It was one of my most mem memorable ministry involvements because many came to know God's love and surrendered their lives to Him. I thank God for how He showed me His love and compassion through my family and churchmates. I am now utterly motivated and inspired to serve passionately my one and true King who gave His life for me. My name is Renzo Orquico. One's a pastor's kid who had a little compassion for others, but now a youth coordinator and a child of the most compassionate and loving God. Thank you, Rance, for that very encouraging story. I'm sure everyone is, was encouraged and inspired by you. In closing, let's remember the greatest commandment given to us by God. Matthew 22, 37 says, And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and foremost commandment. The second is like it. 
you shall love your neighbor as yourself. By this, men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. John 13, 35. By this love, all men will know that we are disciples of Jesus if we have love for one another. We enjoy the privilege of being children of God because of His love through prayer and reading of His Word. Let's continue to share God's love with the lost, the least, and the last through our fellowship and witnessing so the world will know that we are true disciples of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for loving us. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for saving us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for empowering us so we can love others as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Praise God for his message to you, Pastor Eric. I am again reminded that our life's greatest purpose is to love God and love others. It is by our love that the whole world will know and experience Jesus. That's why this is our first core value in CCF and it is so essential. So to all CCF members and to all family and friends joining us tonight, welcome to our very first evening of this year's mid-year prayer and fasting called Fast, Pray, Love. If you have not yet downloaded your copy of our booklet, please do so now. And the link is being shown to you right now. The booklet that you'll be able to download will serve as your guide throughout the next four days. And if you're not that familiar with why and how we do prayer and fasting, maybe it's your first time or you're a guest, please read the introduction in that booklet so that your mind, heart, and body, your whole person is, is ready and prepared. Now, let's get ready to meet the Lord of love in prayer. For the next few minutes, we will use this prayer guide, P-R-A-Y, which stands for pause, repent, ask, and yield. So let's begin with pause. P, pause and worship. We want to pause to reflect on who God is and respond to him in worship. You can do this silently or you can speak out or even sing out your worship of him and your gratitude for all that he has done. You can do this by yourself, or if you have someone else with you, you can take turns extolling God, praising Him, recounting His glorious attributes. And here's a verse that might help you as you meditate and try and pause to worship Him. It's one of my favorites. Psalm 46, verse 10. Cease striving or be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, says God. I will be exalted in all the earth. R is all about repent or resist. What does that mean? After we pause and worship, we ask the Holy Spirit to now examine our attitudes, our thoughts and behavior. And as we do that, it is time for us to repent, which means to turn away from sin. There may be thoughts and actions or things we have done and we wanna repent and go 180 away from that. It is time to resist, maybe for some of us, justifying or overlooking the sin, ignoring it, pretending it's not there. Remember, the Bible guides us in this verse, Psalm 139, 23, verse 24, search me, O God, and know my heart, the Bible says, try me and know my anxious thoughts and see if there be any hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. So important to do R. Then there is A, what is A? Many of us pray like this, ask. We can now approach God's throne of grace and ask. That is to bring to him our petitions specific to tonight's prayer focus for the world, to love God and to love others. You can pray as the Holy Spirit leads you, but we will be providing specific prayer points that can help you as you pray and you wanna use that maybe as you pray through it with us as well. Again, you can pray on your own or you can pray with whoever is with you at this time. Why is now yield. What is yield? Finally, after PRA, we have a brief moment to yield, to actually surrender to God. Surrender our own personal petitions or anything else that burdens your heart. And in a few moments, we will close in prayer together.
Let's close in prayer, shall we? Lord, we want to thank you and we yield to you all of our petitions. We want to remind ourselves that just like Christ prayed, not our will, but yours be done. And as we pray, we want to remind ourselves once again to to love you and to love others in our world because there's so much need. And this is how people will know that we are your disciples and followers by the way we love one another. We pray for for love to permeate our, 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 not just our world, but our church, our church family, our families, and our personal lives. Lord, we thank you for once again, just this opportunity to do so right now amidst all the things that are happening happening in the world. Lord God, we have the privilege and the freedom to pray. What a blessing it is. So help us not to even take this wonderful privilege lightly. Thank you once again for this time. We pray for the rest of our prayer and fasting and all the days that will ensue. Our prayers that you would work powerfully, that we would experience not just the privilege of fasting, but the breakthroughs that come along with it as you have demonstrated so many times in your word. So we look forward to all of these in anticipation as we faithfully fast with the rest of our church family. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. All right, so final reminders to all of us. If any of you, would like to be prayed for or are in need of counseling, we invite you to join our online prayer centers where you can meet with a prayer facilitator who can intercede with you and for you. We have several Zoom links of various satellites. So please check the screen for the CCF satellite nearest you and join their particular online prayer center. You can also connect with us via our online chat seen on the links on your screen. Finally, we want to invite you again tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. if you're going to catch this live for day two of our prayer and fasting week. That is Manila time, just to be clear. And as we do that, we will intercede for the church tomorrow and learn about our second core value in CCF with Pastor Ikoy De Leon. Again, our evening watch starts at 7.30 p.m. Manila time. See you and God bless.